So hi everyone again. Um, so for those of you I've not actually met, I think there's probably relatively few of you. Uh, so I am the, the rabies coordinator based with, with what we now call WOA. Um, and my role is really just trying to link up all the various threads and things of the United Against Rabies Forum. Uh, so I'm going to give you a bit of an overview on working group one at the moment. This is a, an update essentially from uh, Ryan Wallace and Tumi Mwangi. Uh, they are the ones that co-chair this working group, but unfortunately neither of them could make it in person, although I think Tumbi, possibly Ryan, is online. Um, to provide a bit of an, an overview or a bit of context, so as I said, the United Against Rabies Forum, we launched that uh, in September 2020. And the whole purpose of this network was to implement the Global Strategic Plan, so really take the objectives of that, progress those activities and drive it forward. Um, we initially set up um, Working Group 1 and then followed that with Working Group 2 and 3. The idea behind each working group was that we would try and use each one of those to focus on a specific objective of the global strategic plan, but we also know that there's plenty of overlap, so there was never any intention to have those siloed specifically. Um, and that launch event in 2020 really helped us um, get feedback from stakeholders about what those priority activities were. So as you can see, uh, for those of you familiar with the global strategic plan, this is Working group one is essentially straight from uh, object objective one of zero by 30, so the effective use of vaccines, medicines, tools, and technologies. Um, and the, the key overarching objective was really to find priority areas under that objective one that we could progress. But when we asked stakeholders um, to identify what those priority activities were, these key objectives were the ones that we highlighted. So the need to strengthen surveillance systems, which we've already heard about, maximizing the existing tools and information resources. So we know we have a lot of tools and resources out there, but it's a case of trying to get people to use them rather than just make new tools or find new ways to do those. We needed to enhance vaccination and we wanted to engage communities for capacity building. Now I should say that uh, a big thank you to Working Group One because they were our first working group established. So they were our guinea pigs of sorts. Um, it did mean that we all of the teething problems and things like that as we tried to kind of establish how we wanted these working groups to look uh, kind of got tested out on this working group so they've, they've put up with a lot um, and it meant we could learn from things for working group two and working group three about how we wanted to approach these. Um, these here so one to six essentially what we did was create specific work streams so once we had our objectives we had our working group members we then wanted to sit down and go how do we progress these and it just naturally evolved into um, having a, a work stream that focused on each one of those. So we had the overarching working group members, and then each activity would go out and get some work stream members um, that had the expertise and capacity to progress those specific activities. The first three of these, so minimum data elements, tool evaluation, and the partnership map, these are straight from our launch event. So these ones essentially were activities that we handed the working group and said, this is what the stakeholders have told us they need uh, for us to progress. And that's what we want you to focus on initially. Once we'd made progress with those, the further, um, so dog identification and the human animal bond, rapid diagnostic testing and dog vaccination, they were things that we added on later once we'd demonstrated some progress with those initial work streams. So our first work stream was led by Ryan Wallace. Um, and it was really looking at how we could support surveillance. So we have a number of international guidelines and standards, um, but there wasn't always very clear definitions for some of these things. We also needed to support countries in having um, a standardized uh, definitions for some of these minimum data elements. And how could we identify these and give them something to go, this is what is the bare minimum of what we need at an international level in order to inform these things. So disease detection and IBCM, dog vaccination, as Bernadette mentioned in terms of forecasting for vaccine and pharmaceuticals uh, and human bite treatment and um, PEP. So we initially focused on an international level data. We know that there's international, then our national data, and then our field, field level um, side of things. International was probably the easiest to focus on initially. Um, and that's why we went with that one. So we did a, a landscape analysis of all of the international documents that we had available. And we really wanted to get standardized definitions uh, for all of those, those data elements that we had. 
So where we are at now is that we have a, um, a minimum data elements document that is almost finalized. So we anticipate having that available on the United Against Rabies website probably in the coming weeks. And then from there, we need to make sure that we implement it. So Gregorio and Bernadette mentioned, you know, we're, we're very good at writing documents um, and pushing documents, but that's not really where we want to finish it. We need to make sure this is implemented and taken on board by countries. So for that, we need to see how we can link that through to the WHO Global Health Observatory. Um, and I know Ryan has worked quite closely with Katrin and Bernadette in, um, in trying to make sure that those align quite nicely. Uh, there's not 100% alignment, but there's definitely a really strong alignment with those sorts of things. And over the next coming years, we can kind of really push countries to support that data submission through those. Uh, we also want to make sure that that aligns with countries uh, submitting the dossiers for the, the WOA um, endorsement process. So when they submit a dossier for their national strategic plan endorsement, there's a, a whole <laughs> lovely section requesting various data and things. And the idea is if we can link this document um, to that endorsement process, we can support the countries in actually building an appropriate dossier to submit that. Um, so this will be a, a question that we really want to focus on in our breakout session one as well is now that we have um, a document that's almost finalized, how do we implement it? It's all very well to have that on our website or very well to circulate that to regional and country focal points, but how do we really encourage that implementation of that? Our second one, our second work stream is really looking at tool evaluation. Uh, so, as I said, we've got a lovely existing amount of tools. Some people just don't know that they're available to use or perhaps don't have the guidance on how to use those in their programs. So it's really a case of how do we go about collecting um, and then evaluating those tools? So how do we support stakeholders in making the decision on which tool to use when, what's most fit for purpose for their specific program, uh, pro programmatic needs? Uh, so we had a bit of a mention of the SISOT tool uh, from Louis a bit earlier. Um, this is being used really to kind of evaluate all of those tools and give you the strengths and weaknesses of some of those. Uh, we finally have our, our website up and the idea is that we're going to have a toolbox of these tools. And you can see an example there. The idea is that we're going to have the tool where they're kind of used for, so what part of the, the program you're going to use that for where you can find some more information, so the developer and how you can get in contact with those. And then just um, the next step for that will be in terms of how we then link that again to our SARE assessment work plan, um, to the, the national strategic plan and things like that. Uh, so this was initially run by Sean Shadamy. Um, I'm not sure if he's online, but um, he did a fantastic job of really pushing that forward. And I believe uh, Joaquin is now leading that. Um, I suspect it was more of a voluntold situation rather than a, a put his hand up to lead it, but it's over to him. So if you've got any questions, uh, he and, and Dan are the people to ask about this. Um, the next steps, as I understand it, is really looking at um, how we get more of those tool developers to submit that. So at the moment, the tools that we've got available are tools often um, that have been developed by current UAR forum members. But there's obviously a, a plethora of various tools out there that we still want to evaluate, but we do need permission from those developers to evaluate and put those publicly on the website. So the next process is going to be developing that, um, that system for submitting those tools and then going through that evaluation process to then put it online. Uh, but I do encourage you to, to go have a look at the website and go through that tool list. Um, there's still some work to be done on, on how to help people choose them, but I think we're making a really good start on just having a, a good uh, toolbox or categorization of some of those tools to help people. Um, our third one is our partnership map, and I'm sure the work stream um, participants can support me in saying it's been a, been a bit more of a challenging work stream, this one. Um, as you can imagine, there is infinite number of things that we can be trying to put on a map. Um, and the problem is where do we sit and what, what kind of data do we want to put on a map that's going to be encouraging, that's going to be helpful, um, but isn't going to discourage people. So we need to be politically sensitive with it. Um, we have such poor data as we've been hearing that it was a very limited use to just simply try and put what data we have available on there. 
Um, and after a lot of discussions, we kind of got to this point where we felt it would be most useful in mapping out partnership um, activities. So where are our partners working and what activities are they doing in various countries? And the idea behind this was that, um, as we know, we've got all of these people, all of these NGOs, international organizations, uh, all of these various activities at different levels going on. And it's often quite hard for people going into country to avoid duplicating those. Um, so what we wanted to do is make sure that we had an, had an option for facilitating contact between stakeholders, showing where these people are working, what activities they're doing, and how do we then link those up? So if you're going into a country, you can say, these are the people I need to contact to make sure we're aligning activities. But also it would then link into our working group three, so our resource um, mobilization and advocacy. We're going, these are the countries we've got that are getting all of the, this support. That's where you can potentially put uh, resources or funding into some of the activities that you might be interested in and align with your, um, your own strategies or your own resource mobilization needs. But also here are the gaps, here are the countries that don't seem to have any partners working in, and that's where we can potentially start some work as well. Um, so it's definitely not meant to be an exhaustive list of data. So the other aspect that we will have is having a, um, like a little drop card for each country so that we can have data there that supports um, demonstrating the progress that we're making. So again, it's not gonna have exhaustive data in terms of number of human rabies deaths, any of those indicators that we talked about before. We're hoping to push that through the Global Health Observatory and the WOA WAHIS systems. But this will really be a case of how do we link this to, you know, does this country have a, an endorsed national strategic plan? Have they gone through and um, done their GD rep costing? Have they gone through and done a SARE assessment? And what milestone is that country at? And in that sense, we can have kind of a, a global vis vis visualization of where all the countries stand and how they're progressing. And we can try and link in some of those other working group activities there as well. So at the moment, we're at a, a point where we're building a questionnaire, which we'll be sending out um, to the United Against Rabies Forum members. And that will have a list of all the activities, what level they're doing at, uh, that at. So whether it's uh, local level, national level, international level. And then we can start mapping those on a map, um, hopefully later this year. Um, there is gonna be some existing challenges at the moment. We're really just gonna focus on the United Against Rabies Forum members primarily because you can imagine um, in terms of managing that data set, it's gonna be pretty difficult to do if we don't have some kind of categorization of who we're collecting data from. Um, that's not to say that in future, fa uh, future phases, we might not kind of grow that further, but at the moment we just need to consolidate what information we're asking from members, get that demonstrated on a map, and then we can move forward from there. Uh, so Terence is, is leading that work stream and I'm sure would be happy to answer any questions for you. Uh, but at the moment, our aim is to get that questionnaire sent out to forum members uh, in the next couple of months and have a, a basic map, hopefully ready to share with people uh, by a World Rabies Day this year. So our next work stream is our dog identification and human animal bond work stream. Uh, so thank you to Guillaume and now Thais, who's taken over that work stream. Um, we've recently restarted that work stream, so it's still in quite the early phases of defining what we want to look at. Uh, but really, uh, really the, um, the core focus of this work stream is demonstrating the benefit um, of dog identification alongside dog vaccination. So uh, demonstrating that when we can differentiate between vaccinated and unvaccinated dogs, uh, we can see a change in behavior of people in the dogs, potentially a reduction in the, the number of dog bites. Uh, so that work stream is, as I said, still defining a lot of their activities. But one of the things they'll be looking at is considering various pilot projects to collect data in terms of then demonstrating the cost effectiveness and benefits of this. And then our rapid diagnostic testing is uh, one of our more recent work streams as well. Uh, so Katie Hampson is leading this. And the idea is that we really want to kind of support using rapid diagnostic testing or how can we find a way to to have rapid diagnostic um, testing support surveillance. Um, so in terms of what they're doing at the moment, their activities are really focusing on a questionnaire or a survey, both of experts, but then in-field users as well. 
um, and seeing if we can find, find a way to develop guidance that can support people using that. So that will also work alongside some of the activities that are being done by our, um, our WOA reference laboratory network, so RAB Lab. Uh, this is something that they're also kind of looking into um, from a, a verification or validation of some of those tests, but we'll be working alongside that, that network as well to try and find best way that we can support rapid diagnostic testing use. And then finally, this is our, our most recent uh, work stream, so the dog vaccination work stream. We're still developing the concept note for this and the activ activities and deliverables. Really interestingly, this is actually one that we built on from working group two. So Katinka will explain shortly about the constraints work stream of working group two, but that work stream did a, a fairly exhaustive um, list of various constraints in the literature and went and kind of conducted some, um, some surveys of stakeholders to see what the main constraints are to uh, success in rabies programs. And one of the biggest constraints that we were having coming up was all related to dog vaccination. And the idea of that constraints work stream was always to go, here are the biggest problems. Now we can feed that into other work streams to then develop the solutions for it. So this is the first time we're kind of building off one of these other work streams. Um, so it'd be really interesting to see how that goes, but so far it's, um, it's a really nice option of just kind of getting some more information to then feed back into developing solutions for that. So at the moment, I think they're also planning a bit of a, a survey of people that are doing dog vaccination on the ground to see what those specific constraints are. The idea is that we can then sit down, we can look at those, see what tools already exist that we can use for these constraints for dog vaccination. And are we simply not using them well enough or do we need new tools or new guidelines to help with this? So thank you very much. Um, I've listed our rather long list of, of participating people. I should say that um, in terms of how people contribute, so we have the, the wider United Against Rabies Forum and the members of that forum are all uh, organizations rather than individuals. Um, and it's a very straightforward process. You can visit the, the website there to find out more about it, but essentially organizations just fill in a very basic application form um, and then they can kind of join in that wider forum. But in terms of then contributing to the working groups themselves, uh, we have people that just give their time and expertise uh, depending on what they're available to do and what their capacity is. Um, so all of these people are putting in an enormous amount of effort uh, for free, just because they are passionate about what they do. Um, so a huge thank you to all of these and obviously to working group two and three as well. Um, I did have a couple of questions about how to join the forum and join the working groups. Um, just maybe find me afterwards in the interest of time and I can certainly send you through the application forms and put you in touch with the, the relevant working group chairs. You've got Katinka here for working group two and Isabel for working group three if you're interested in those specific working groups. Uh, so thank you very much. I don't know if there's any questions.